Okay, we should be recording. So um, welcome everybody to um, our first interview as part of our kind of uh, digital River Talks series. So I'm, I'm Catherine Price. You're probably used to seeing me or hearing me at River Talks at the River Center. And since we weren't able to host that this year, uh, we are doing some interviews and bringing those to you uh, via YouTube, via our social media, and through our podcast. So Today, I'm very excited for our first guest to be Annie Goodhue, and Annie is a volunteer extraordinaire with the Cumberland River Compact, and she um, is also a reti retired aquatic biologist, and she currently is the leading force behind our Creek Critters program, which is one of the programs that we bring to schools across Middle Tennessee. So with everything else that's been going on, that program, um, unfortunately, we've had to cancel a lot of those school programs for the rest of the year, but it was exciting that in our 2019-2020 school year, despite a shortened school year, we already reached 1,300 uh, kids through the program, and that's uh, 1,300 kids that Annie has helped teach. So very exciting, and just to put that in perspective, last year, with a full school year, we reached 1,200 students. So we actually reached more with a shorter school year. So we're, we're counting that as a win for this year. So um, excited to have Annie with us today to talk a little bit about her career and um, as an aquatic biologist and um, what she loves about creek critters. So Annie, could you tell me a little bit about what being an aquatic biologist is? What did you do every day? Um, wh what was that job like? Okay, well, um... An aquatic biologist uh, is someone who studies water and water organisms. And whereas like a marine biologist uh, specializes in a saltwater environment, I was a freshwater aquatic biologist. So I would study water and water critters in inland waters, uh, like creeks, streams, and rivers here in Tennessee. Um, I worked with TDEC. And that was the Tennessee Department of Environmental Conservation. And at the time, I was with a division called Water Pollution Control. And so what I would do when I first started on the job is we would go out into waters and we would go, we would uh, pick a, we, there, say there was a pollution source or something we thought was causing impaction. We would go to an upstream site uh, that didn't seem to be impacted. And then we'd go to a downstream site and uh, we would gather all our information of those two sites and compare them to see if any kind of impaction was occurring downstream. So at each one of those sites, we would gather information on the aquatic macroinvertebrates, the aquatic insects, uh, different aquatic life, the habitat, and the water chemistry. Now these were intensive and time consuming surveys, <laughs> so uh, they did take a while. And you can only do a handful of these each year, but, but that's how I started out. And the other things I would do is I would investigate fish kills and water uh, pollution complaints that the public would call call in. And <laughs> I also started the beginnings of working with this outreach program we had at the field office, the Creek Clears. It became the Creek Clears. And that was where we bring these aquatic environmental education programs geared to school groups, you know, taking the creek to them. And uh, we were kind of developing that all along the way of well, let's bring some live critters in, or let's take some, get some preserved specimens and bring them in. Um, let's learn, figure out some games. So we did that also. Um, I got to tell you, something really amazing happened, though, after I was there a few years. The state and water pollution control decided to go uh, take this new overview approach of assessing our waters, and they called it the watershed approach. And this was really tremendous, because now what we did was we over time developed these reference streams. We went into these different areas of Tennessee, different regions, and they, we called them eco regions, and we would find a handful, a small handful of the best streams we could find. And so those streams represented the best water quality, you know, aquatic life, habitat. Um, and, uh, and what we would do is that now kind of became our upstreams, uh, these highest quality waters in, in each eco region of Tennessee. And so, um, what I could do as a biologist now is go out and uh, look at these sites, you know, and compare each site I, I would go to in the same eco region with these reference streams in that mm -hmm. eco region. And at the same time, we did one other thing. We developed this um, procedure, this EPA stream survey protocol, that was a screening technique instead of these long time consuming in-depth in uh, stream surveys. And since I had gotten all this great on the job training, it was perfect. So now, uh, this was also on a five year program, rotating uh -huh. program. Uh -huh. So I was like the aquatic biologist from Middle Tennessee. 
I had five years to cut all these streams in Middle Tennessee. So each year would be a different watershed. So I could say like when you're going to the Harpeth River. And now instead of this, you know, this smaller amount of surveys, I could do 100 to 200 sites. Wow. And uh, I could uh, walk, every time I walked away from that site, another thing was since this was a screening process, I, um, I could know pretty much the health of that stream site as I walked away. It's mm-hmm. like, this is supporting, partially supporting, or not supporting. And at the end of that year, you, you could uh, create this tremendous like watershed map of say the Harpeth River. Mm-hmm. And you could have all these different sites where you could see this water supporting, this isn't, you know, this stream's healthy, this, this isn't. And, and, and Annie, um, Annie, when you say supporting, can you explain what you mean by that where it's supporting, partially supporting or not supporting? Just for right. people who might not know what that means. Okay, sure. That's like the criteria you would have to, you know, you developed um, these standards by where you would know if the water chemistry was like this, the readings of dissolved oxygen or the pH. And if you find so many family of critters like this, you know, so many taxa of critters. um, And if the habitat looks like this, certain scores, then you could say, you know, it was like a an A, a B, a C, or D, or an F, you know, you could give them a score, a grade, like, and and you could say, oh, this one's passing, this is healthy water, right Mm -hmm. kind of critters, right kind of habitat, right kind of water quality. So, yeah, so we had criteria for each of those levels of supporting, partially supporting, and not supporting, yeah, and and another exciting thing about that was, now, uh, it was amazing, Uh, we got to assess streams that we'd never seen before, you know, I mean, you could really more thoroughly cover an area in a watershed. So that was a really exciting time uh, to be doing aquatic biology with the state. And, and that's what I, I ended up doing most of my, yeah. my job. That's cool. I can't imagine how many different streams that you've probably walked in across Middle <laughs> Tennessee. I probably almost all of them, right? I mean, at it, some point. There were thousands, thousands. It was, wow. it was wonderful. <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. And so as an aquatic biologist, you know, you, you were doing science every day, getting out there and collecting data and analyzing data. What made you interested in getting into science? What made you excited about doing that as a career? Um, well, I'll tell you what, I think it's as simple as this. When I was younger, I just loved being outdoors, you know, and I loved animals, uh, yeah. all types of critters, right? And I think there was this, this just kind of like this natural evolution as happens in biology, yeah. <laughs> yeah. this natural progression where I tell you what, Catherine, I mean, one thing led to another and, and there I was a biologist and an aquatic biologist. Yeah. So um, it happened over a longer period of time, but I really think for me, it was that, that basic, you know, it was just that real initial love of the outdoors and, and all different kinds yeah. of careers that led me to that. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of how I am too. I feel like I, when I talk to kids, I'm always like, I just like to be outside and I like to play and look at stuff and see what was going on and asking questions just like what is this critter why is it here why isn't it here why is this plant (laughs) growing the way it is those are all that's science right and it's something you do as a kid so um you know intuitively like of course I'm going to ask a question about this and I think as we get older we sort of maybe lose some of that but being a scientist you get to do that all the time which is really exciting yeah 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 Yeah. that's awesome (laughs) So what was your favorite part besides walking in the streams? What was your favorite part of being an aquatic biologist? Well, I got to tell you, (laughs) there were so many favorite parts. Um, Another thing about the fact that after being with the state a couple of years, I ended up with that that watershed program when the the state went to that. That was a gift that fell on my lap because now 80% of my time became field time. Yeah. I mean, so I was just out in the field all the time. And I love being in the field. That was just a favorite. Every day was a discovery and some kind of adventure. I mean, you're sitting by a creek and over here in the pasture, these cows, you know, yeah. giving you the eye. And then, then this, uh, uh, this, you know, flock of wild turkey goes strutting by. And then a couple of days later, you might be outside of a, a, a city instead of in the middle of the woods or a field. And uh, you're walking through this huge culvert and you're looking around seeing the most creative, imaginative, artistic graffiti you've ever had. (laughs) And um, I got to tell you one thing, there were just some moments that just really stick in my mind. I was sitting in this field of um, uh, uh, kind of this jewelweed, you know, and I've been, I've been doing my assessment, my bio recon, that was my screening. And I'd already looked at my critters. I was making my list and set them free. And then I'd made my habitat assessment. So I was sitting there and I was writing up my summation. And I realized that I was hearing all this buzzing you know, around my head. And I tell you what, Catherine, I looked up 
and I was surrounded by hummingbirds. Oh, wow. I know. They had come in to feed on the blossoms of that jewelweed. Wow. And I had just been so, so still writing that, that summation that they, I guess, just thought it was part of the landscape. So I just stayed there and, you know, let them finish. It just took a few minutes and then off they went, you know. Yeah. And there was one other time that I just really particularly remember. Um, I was going to take a chemical sample down by the river and um, I saw this little fluttering, you know, a little movement. And it was the most beautiful bluebird, so bright blue. Mm. And he got entangled in some old remnant silt fencing. It mm. just had been like some little plastic shreds. And so I scooped him up in my hands, you know, and I was slowly untangling him. And then there he was. And he just sat there for, you know, like 30 seconds. And then he flew off. I just, you know, so it was really amazing moments. But I got to say, as fun as all that was, you, you always remember that you were there to take the pulse of the stream, right? You're there to record the health of that stream. You know, that was your mission. And you needed to record the aquatic life that lived there and the habitat and the quality of that water mm -hmm. because that was gonna be written down to, to use in, in assessing these waters for now and the future. So um, that was always uh, something that was a good feeling, you know? Yeah. Um, and one other thing I gotta say, I, I love the people I work with. You know, at that time of water pollution control in our office and our uh, field office and division, it was the greatest people that were so dedicated and hardworking and they really cared about what they were doing. And, and that was a fun part of the job too. And it's kind of like you were saying before, I was still doing the Creek Critter shows at the time. And you wanted to convey that to the kids when you were out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. You wanted them to see that you can have a good time doing a job that you love. And, and they're at that age in elementary school, especially where they're getting all these different ideas coming at them. And if something strikes your fancy, if something interests you, you know, you can pursue that and make that your future. So mm -hmm. it was, there was many, many fun things about me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I love that idea of kind of sitting still in nature because I think, you know, especially with everything that's going on right now, we're sort of forced to sit still and that can feel really uncomfortable. But, you know, leaning into that and saying, I'm going to sit still and see what I can see. And I know I was taking a walk around the neighborhood and we were pointing out some bushes that were flowering. And I was like, oh, I, don't, I feel like they didn't flower like that last year. I don't remember. And my husband was like, no, I think they did. I think we just weren't looking. You know, we weren't <laughs> looking last year. We were busy in what we were doing. And so I wasn't sitting still and I wasn't watching and I wasn't looking for that. And there's something humbling about sitting there and kind of taking all of that in um, mm -hmm. and seeing things that you probably have never seen before. So um, we're actually working on right now a nature journaling activity for kids. So if people are listening and they've got kids and families, you know, heading outside just with a piece of paper to journal is a great way to kind of sit still and, and observe nature. Um, so you talked a little bit about our Creek Critters program. So I wanted to just ask some more questions about that. So, um, so our Creek Critters program, the way, you know, I, like you kind of mentioned, we bring the critters into the classroom and Annie, you, you started that program with TDEC, and then when you retired, we were lucky enough to have that, you know, come under the wing of the Cumberland River Compact um, and reaching all the students across this area. Um, and you recently described yourself in an email as the mama dragonfly of Creek Critters, which I appreciate. I think that's a very accurate description um, because you um, help teach so many kids. We get so much positive feedback about having your expertise and enthusiasm in the classroom. So. Um, Tell me about why, why do you love that program and what keeps you, keeps you coming back every time we, we send you off to another school? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I did love developing the Creek Careers program and uh, helping it become what it's become because you really are bringing the world of water to the students. You know, you're introducing them to these aquatic macroinvertebrates, uh, these aquatic insects uh, and how that represents water's health. Um, you're uh, showing them how they're connected to those critters and that water and also how to protect the waters. Uh, well, for instance, let's say like um, in the Creek Critters program now at the Compact, um, if, if uh, conditions are conducive to it, you know, I can go out and collect some critters and we can have live critters in the classroom. And so they can see, we'll put them in these trays of water and I'll bring some substrate with, you know, rock sticks and leaves and they can see how a critter would look in this natural environment. But even if uh, the conditions aren't conducive to that, we've got this great collection, right? Of all these aquatic uh, macroinvertebrates and salamanders and fish in these, these little bottles, these vials. And students can hold those in their hands, you know? 
and we'll set up the microscopes where they can get up close and personal. And then we'll play these aquatic web of life game that, that shows them how they are connected. You know, that really drives that home. Um, and the other thing that I really like uh, is the, uh, the drop in the bucket. Okay, so because I know you've got this globe and you're showing them here we live on this big blue marble and that blue part being the waters, right, of our earth, which covers 70%. And, and you say, oh, there's plenty of water for everyone. But by the time we get through that exercise, you realize um, there's less than 1% of that surface water, this fresh water available to us. And we are billions of people. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's the drop in the bucket. And that really does, I, I think, let them know what a precious resource it is and how, then we talk about how to protect that. Um, I, I, there's something I like to call the yuck to awe uh, yeah. factor, Catherine. Yeah. That's, that's right. When we come into a classroom, right, we got these insects, and uh, you're going to hear some, ew, or that's nasty. You know, <laughs> by the time you leave, by the time you leave, uh, it's like, wait, what? Wow, really? Yeah. And you literally cannot answer their questions fast enough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know, you know, at one point I'll bring out this uh, one sample. Of, we got some great samples of dragonflies, right, in their aquatic form. And at that age, you know, we're gearing towards fourth graders, you know, around 10 years old or so. Most children have seen a dragonfly, either an illustration or one flying around somewhere. But they do not realize that, you know, they come in this little aquatic form and it, it does not really look like the dragonfly. I have some, we have some great samples. And so uh, when they find out that is a dragonfly that has gills and lives in the water for one, two, three, four, five years, you know, they're really amazed, uh, which is another thing I like because at some point during a presentation, you are going to get those students to gasp. <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, that's what you're shooting for. You, you've got their attention. Um, and there's one other thing I'd like to say. I know uh, one time in particular, we went in to give this talk, and there was a, a, a little girl sitting, you know, off to the side. And you could tell she wasn't having a good day, you know. Mm -hmm. And you never know what a student's going through. So we, we carried on and gave our talk, and then we had the game portion. But it was at the end, that interaction part, and... Um, I looked over and students were looking through the scopes and picking up the preserved specimen and she had a preserved specimen in her hand and she was smiling and then she walked over to the scope and she started asking questions, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I gotta say, it's a beautiful thing to see that glean in a student's eye when they're being uh, open, sparked to a new idea mm -hmm. and, and some kind of discovery. And that's another reason I think I keep enjoying doing this and coming back. The students' enthusiasms and curiosity and questions, I mean, you get to see it through their eyes, and you're always learning something from that, too. So it, it's a really wonderful experience. Yeah. It's so, I, I love that yuck to awe, because my favorite is when you've got something under the microscope, you know, and a lot of kids that we bring in the program to have never looked under a microscope before. So that's just seeing something that big, uh -huh. that blows their mind, let alone the fact that it's a dragonfly larva. And so they'll always be like, oh, gross, that's disgusting. And then they're like, hey, I want to come, come show it. And they'll grab a friend and they'll, well, okay, now you need to look at this. And I'm like, I thought you said it was gross. I thought you'd like, I want to look at it again. Ew, that's so gross. Let me look at it again. And like, they clearly are getting really excited about it. Yes. You know? and, and it's so, yeah, it is weird to look at a dragonfly that close. <laughs> like, that's okay. It is kind of crazy. But to see them get, start to get excited about it and want to share about it is, is really fun. And the schools where we've had a chance to go back um, you know, again and again, and to, they, they know who we are. You know, one of my favorite stories is from a school where we go really frequently. And so, you know, we usually kind of do an introduction like, oh, do you know where, you know, where we get our drinking water from? And a lot of students don't know it comes from the Cumberland River. And at this school, this kid was eventually like, it's from the Cumberland River. We know that. We all know that. I'm like, no, you don't understand how awesome it is that you know that and so <laughs> it just goes to show that you know bringing these programs and, and talking and bringing the enthusiasm it really sticks with with the students so yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Great I, to hear. yeah yeah I love it um, so most important question is what is your favorite Creek Critter ah okay well now that's a trick question okay <laughs> I mean, that's like maybe asking a parent of yeah. who your child is, right, right? And maybe some parents do have a favorite child. <laughs> but I got to tell you, the diversity of these critters is fantastic. So I, I just can't have a favorite. But, but let me tell you just about a few of them, okay? Like 
there's the cute little water penny, right? We all love the water penny. It's a little tiny guy, maybe the size of your pinky fingernail, you know, a little, he's little round and brown, like a little tiny penny. And you would find them maybe uh, gliding along really slowly under a rock in a riffle or something in a healthier stream. And they, it's just amazing how they move like a little tiny hovercraft, you know? <laughs> and there's caddisflies that are, some of them make these cases that are just um, incredible. And these really underwater architects. And what they have is they, they, they produce this silk and it bonds together little tiny grains of sand or a woody debris or leaf particles and they make these uh, incredible cases that uh, for some families you can actually tell what the family of caddisfly is by the type of, of case wow. they create. I That's know <laughs> and, and you know how they have like shark week and everybody gets all excited about shark week these predators you know they, well there's your dragonflies okay <laughs> you could have dragonfly week because they are voracious predators um, they actually do help regulate the, the number of other aquatic critters, you know. So there's something for everyone in, in creek critters. The diversity is there. And, and that's a great thing because I'm sure even if I don't have a favorite, you know, if you look amongst them, you, you, people can maybe find something that really interests yeah. you. Know? Yeah, yeah. I know we always talk, uh, I think the kids' favorite always tends to be the leech. Like we talk about a leech and then they always want to see a leech. And so I, mean, I think we've got one leech sample. Yeah. So that one gets viewed a lot. We have to keep it, keep it separate so that it doesn't walk away. Or <laughs> That's right. Those blood suckers really draw them in. Don't yeah. They? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have to say, I love the Helgramites. I think those, oh. we had one at one of the schools we went to up in Sumner County when I was with you guys at the beginning of the year. Uh -huh. and it was in the in the water and it was just like wiggling and it was like doing this dance almost and I had never seen that I've seen them before but hadn't really seen them moving in that way yeah, and yeah. that was just I was like I'm just okay kid let me look at this like I want to look at this this is so cool so yeah get out yeah. of my way kid. <laughs> yeah yeah this is this is what I want to look at so yeah it's I mean especially when you have the chance to bring in those live critters and you yeah. never know what you're gonna get it could right. be you know you don't find a water penny. You thought you didn't have a water penny. Then one shows up halfway through the day with the kids well, and they, right. it's, you know, there it is. So yeah. that's so fun to see and, and to see what we can, we can find each time. <laughs> All right. Well, to close our, our interview, although Annie and I could probably talk for the next <laughs> three hours about this. Um, but what, what do you want to share with people about why they should care about water, why they should care about clean water and, whether it's you know students that might be listening in, families, teachers, why why should people care about protecting clean water? Okay, well um, that's a good question, <laughs> and you know the Cumberland River Compact uses that phrase "our water, our future," mm -hmm. and that is really true. Um, along with things like we all live downstream, right? You yeah. know, I mean, and the thing is, these aren't political. This isn't a pol something political. It's a fact. You know, uh, if we take care of our water it'll take care of us. And if we don't, it won't. Um, most people naturally just enjoy being around water, you know? I mean, uh, in, near, or around it in some fashion, uh, whether it's taking a hot shower, or <laughs> swimming in the ocean, or sitting by the lake, or fishing in a creek, or enjoying your favorite beverage, right? Yeah. I mean, we're surrounded with water all the time. We may not even realize it. Um, in fact, humans, you know, an adult, average adult human is composed of over 60% water. So um, it's not only figuratively, but it's literally what we are. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we need to be mindful of that. And um, let's just say um, water is what we are. Let's yeah. take care of it. Okay. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better. I love that. Yeah. And I think, you know, the using the creek critters is one way that people start to see that the water it's not just us that relies on water it's all these other critters and I think mm -hmm. seeing those connections is so powerful especially for for kids so yeah. um so thank you Annie for joining me today for this brief interview um it was really fun to hear more about um what you did as an aquatic biologist you know getting excited about science and then of course our wonderful creek critters so um I'm gonna end us there um that's Thank you so much. Do you have anything final you want to say, Annie? Well, I tell you what, it has just been a pleasure. And I want to thank the Compact so much for letting me land this pre-critter program with y'all and see how it's even developed further. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah.
Well, and I'm looking you. forward to getting back in the classroom. Yes, thank <laughs> you for um, bringing that to us. I, it's just been so fun to, to bring to students. So thank you. <laughs> All right.